studio is definitely kind of an inner space. It's like an outer inner space. It's the room for transformation. In a way, it's almost alchemical, I think. You come here with, uh, with lead and clay and, and it might be gold, you know, in the end. My name is Charlotte Gillenhammer. I discovered that I was three-dimensional, that my, my paintings grew out of the wall or even grew out like bodies <laughs> or reliefs from the canvas and they fell down on the floor and sort of crawled out in the space or in the room. I felt a bit like my paintings were quicksand and I drowned in them. Uh, I didn't get up on the surface so I needed an object or you know a physical material with weight and limits. That was my starting point and from there on I could start um, you know, making images again. My uh, first uh, show in a gallery was actually a detonation. So I bought an explosion and, and then I placed all the things that exploded in the gallery to sort of make everything explode and then we can start. <laughs> For me it was also a challenge being very impatient to also look backwards and reflect instead of throwing myself forward because I have that movement too, you know, and my sculptures are sort of falling and falling forwards or throwing themselves and um, hanging and hovering and, and falling. Uh, so I, I think I, I have that kind of dynamic, these um, poles of uh, the more passive implicit and the more active explicit. Some of my sculptures work that way that they just emerge out of my hands and in relation to the space and the architecture. So I, I would say it's not one character or two characters. There are many characters, but they are female uh, human beings and also children in different ages um, and also in different contexts. But I've also done grown-up men, but they're often, they've been lying, resting, sleeping, or even some people thought they were dead also. But I guess the state of sculpture in a way is a dead body. I mean, it's ma just materia. I'm very fascinated by the radiation from a sculpture that I know this is only clay or this is plaster, this is bronze, this is concrete. But why does it seem to be, you know, what does it radiate? It has a certain expression or it's absorbed by something. Uh, it seems to look or to breathe or... I, I was even scared by my own sculptures at one point. <laughs> you know, if you're afraid of the dark sometimes, they've scared me. One of my largest uh, works is uh, Vertigo at Vanos Foundation in Skåne, uh, which is a permanent piece, but it's actually a, a, a you know, full-size um, one-to-one replica of my studio. So it's actually this studio, but uh, upside down. So it's like a reflection of the studio. And uh, when I worked with that late at night and all the others had left, you know, I, I found myself a bit scared, you know, and I felt ridiculous that I was scared in my own work, you know, and at night. Um, and then at one point I, I got out of the studio and ran up the corridor out like Alice in Wonderland and through the rabbit hole, but back. And uh, I thought someone had closed the door, which was just a sort of, a, not hallucination, but I, I just, you know, when you, uh, the light sort of tricks you. And uh, I realized that the door was open, but I thought I was, I was, um, you know, that someone had uh, uh, closed the door and that I had to sleep in my subterranean room, you know? And I thought, I, you know, I will survive. It will be okay, but it won't be pleasant. And uh, uh, yeah. But I, I, I'm uh, fascinated by that um, sort of living, sleeping, breathing, resting, s 
and and um, you know where the and the sort of ultimate point death which of course is uh, an awareness that is there you know that for us human beings <laughs> that we are deadly yeah. and uh, you don't know when you don't know how but we know mm. that but I find it very hard to accept you know that we are going to die <laughs> that's kind of an unbearable thought that I try to get used to.